there's always a couple of flaws that quite fit right. But in terms <laughs> of the, the the variant side, I would say you now you've now got a roulette table, but you've added an or you're now the casino. So you, you might well have a, I have you know a session or two nights or three nights in a row where I'll lose money. Okay, but. The, the longer you stretch those amount of hands out that you play, and you can play a lot of hands quickly online, so that variance mm. doesn't last too long. You know, mm-hmm. you get a good thousand hands out in a, in a night session. Okay. Very, very, very unlikely after 5,000 hands to, to be losing if you're doing fundamentally the right thing. If, if you're following the rules. Exactly. At, at the level that we play, this, this, this small stakes, $5, $10 stakes, that's what where our business strategy is to, to sell that. Once you get to $50 tables, $100 tables, you know, the, the skill level gets to the point where I compete um, with with no real confidence of absolutely crushing it. And I couldn't confidently say you'd make money at those states or I could teach someone to. But the $2, $5, $10 tables, there are so many crazy fun players who like a drink like to play don't understand the fundamentals that you can go on those unlucky runs some crazy drunk could hit his magic 17 or red a few times in a row but eventually that not comes out so this this analogy you're looking for it's a little bit like the analogy of the fruit machine that i was looking at earlier because they used to be over a period of time um, and you're right most people look at uh, uh, the odds of winning and it'll say 95 percent they'll think i put 100 pounds in i'll get 95 good out but of course yeah. that 95 percent is spread over not 100 quid but ten thousand quid for example so long periods of money in and long periods of money out so i want to ask you about bad players and players mistakes in a minute let's just pick a couple of these messages up uh alan alan hello how are you you're right uh, right so mike stanley anyone on here tried match betting so i've got a little experience of promoting match betting i've made about 100 videos for betfair uh, about eight, nine years ago. I think they're all still on YouTube. Um, so we went, yeah, so had to go up to Newcastle and film eight, nine, ten of these at a time. Uh, but um, since then, no, I, I, I understand the basics of it. But how does match betting fit into, match uh, betting, sorry, fit into what you do? Uh, nothing. Uh, no way whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. But I, I massively recommend match betting. I think it, okay. uh, I it for myself, for friends. It's very hard to explain match betting without it sounding like you're gambling or you've got some sort of fix on the horses. Um, tried many times, but match betting, if you've never opened a gambling site and you want to make a guarantee, and this is guaranteed, this isn't like variance with poker. You want to make a guaranteed 500 quid, easy. Yeah, it's uh, match betting you know, is a wonderful way, but you can only do it once very easily. That's the trick with match betting. It's not a, a consistent income, as, as you probably know, Graham. I know a little bit about it, and the, what I noticed on um, when I did the stuff for Betfair, and they they were a, uh, I, I was obviously working with an agency, but I met one of the very senior people at Betfair. He's, he's not there anymore, but uh, he was a great bloke. The, the whole thing was was very very interesting. The amount of interest in it is huge in in the community. And so of course in poker, which we'll get back to in a moment. But um, I, I did notice that um, the the chap that we had with us, who was kind of an expert at match betting and gambling generally. He was constantly, had two phones with him, had an iPad with him. He was constantly nipping out to go and place bets. And he was, he was, he, he was, his eyes were constantly zipping all over the place because he was assuming, I assume, checking for cross bookies or going after him. And uh, he, he always <laughs> had to try and get money out there because that was the level he was playing at. And he, he, he was very professional. And he, he, he would find a, a good match bet and he would put £35,000 on it. But because wow. all the bookies in his town knew him and all the bookies in the next town knew him, he used to have to send out random people with £5,000 each. <laughs> and he had to factor into his winnings the fact that occasionally some of those random people would just go for his money. So he had to build all of that in as well to try and to try and make a living out of it. So I suspect there's a lot more work to it than some people might think. I, I imagine to make a living out of it, yeah. I, I remember trying. So I've done all the new customer offers, which are the easy bits. Very easy. Very satisfying as well because you're taking money off the bad guys, um, and then once you've once you've exhausted the new customer offers, which obviously are very rewarding, you know, twenty lucrative, yeah. But yeah, exactly. Then it starts to become you know you have to work much harder for the money, and you, you end up 
ruining a Saturday afternoon, trying to put five horse bets on simultaneously just to make seven quid. And that's when I gave it up. And I only ever did the new customer offers. Yeah, it's... Uh, but for... I've got a couple. I've got a couple of questions, and then let's look at let's look at poker mistakes. Because I'm imagining some people uh, might enjoy playing poker and might want to get better at poker. So let's look at some just common mistakes. Um, I've got some slightly uh, odd messages. Real talk: Is this men's singles? Now I don't know if you're asking about <laughs> sports or if you're asking if this chap here is single. Uh, I, I I have no idea, <laughs> but maybe that will. Ah, okay. You could poke me anytime, bro. So, uh, not quite sure what's going. Loving the loving the glasses, bro. Okay, fine. Actually, I hate the glasses because I can't see anything with them, and I got a sunshade. Oh, that's not good. I can't see a thing over that way. Um, so, okay, fine. That's uh, that's going to be another question about poker or indeed anything else. All right. So, what are the mistakes that people make when they play poker? So, I would say, and it, and it 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 does nicely align to one of the videos you were making quite recently about. Um, you were talking about the attitude some people have when you were talking about the, the house prices. You're saying no matter what, yes. how many times you tell someone there are 70 grand houses out there, they'll tell you, no, there's not. Oh, and they have that, that, that concrete head on them. Um, and I would say the mental aspect of poker is where most people fail. So there's a lot of fun players in the game that literally don't understand sort of very basic strategy, game strategy. Right. But the biggest flaw that people have is convincing themselves they're a good player um and they have this sort of concrete head on them that says oh it's the poker site that's rigged i'm very very unlucky um i mean what else is there there that oh uh, it's when i get drunk that's the reason i'm not a profitable player because i throw it all away when i'm drunk but the truth is there's a there's a real strategy to the game there's real fundamentals and a discipline that you have to almost treat it like a business um that they 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 just that, that they're not convinced that that's what the reason is for why they're losing it's it's all the main three that i said so getting yourself in that mental aspect of of folding when you're supposed to and you know you're supposed to and 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 having the right amount of money playing at the right level once you've lost walking away not trying to chase money like gamblers do and all that kind of thing it's the mental aspect would be the the biggest reason that a lot of players lose. I'll play against players on a poker table where I'll follow them for 500 hands. We'll, we'll play together. They'll be quite a solid player. And then all of a sudden they'll lose a hand and that'll be it. They'll be, they'll be, they'll lose all of the money in 10 hands because they're just so angry and feel so unjust that they've, they've lost and that luck has hit them and, and things like that. So the mental aspect is, is probably the most important for poker, I would say. Well, that's, that, that, that is interesting because, because you're right. Anybody can follow the basics but of course, poker, as it's intended to be, is an enjoyable thing. And often yeah. for an enjoyable thing, people like a drink or they like to yeah. drink quite late or try and make a cheeky 500 quid while uh, the partner's asleep, for example. And they tend to get a little bit, uh, try and yeah. win this, this money. So just bring poker, to put it to one side for a moment, because I want to also talk about yeah. you growing your channel or moving into the side hustle, however you want to take that. So let's move to that in just a moment. I've got to pick up some messages here. Um, Real Talk says much love, so thank you for that. Riyad, uh, uh, all in on my pocket AAs. <laughs> I, I, that's pr 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 perhaps a poker joke, I don't know. Uh, River says I'm here. Hi, River, how are you? Uh, River, I love poker. Let's play sometimes, uh, sometime I'm not good. So I would suggest, Craig, you, you might want to catch up with, uh, with River here. Um, River, uh, we, we did a live uh, a week or two ago. River uh, just started a crypto channel, I mean, literally two weeks ago, and his, his site's properly exploding. Um, so he's got a couple of hundred thousand plus videos. Uh, they're all him explaining the basics of crypto. So um, you, you should check out his uh, his channel uh, as well as anybody else on here as well. Uh, James, hi Graham, hello, good to see you. Uh, Josh wants to complain about my video on landlords. <sighs> Thanks, Josh. Uh, Riyad, what's your take on poker stars or rather play live? Okay, last poker question for the moment, and then let's look yeah. about uh, moving from side hustle to business, uh, live or whatever. So, what's your take on poker stars or rather play live? Um, well, poker stars is where our bread and butter is. Really, it's the biggest poker site in the world. We don't play live, me and my, 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 my I say business partner at the moment. It's not really quite got there yet, but we're, my, my friend who we play poker with is equally uh, sort of taking it seriously. Pokestars is, is by, it's almost a monopoly. Uh, it's, it's that big. And then there's a few underneath that we do play at. But um, 
I mean, it doesn't. It's not great. Um, I, I wish it cared more about the customer. It, it manipulates maybe the gambling side on, on some people. It doesn't doesn't reward regular players very well, um, which is probably a good thing, really, for fun players to not reward players like me. You want fun players all playing each other rather than uh, players who can take advantage of those worst players. But it's OK that it, it is what it is. It's It's really nice software but I wish they could be slightly nicer to the customers. That's about it, really. Live poker, I have, no, I have no advantage in live poker whatsoever, I reckon. I have, well, not not no, but I'm very into the stats, very into being disciplined at a computer table, um, and live's very slow. I struggle to pick up those those live sort of analysis and, and let me ask you. Let me ask you a stupid question here, right? Uh, just I said no more poker, but let's just ask you a stupid question. I'm just thinking about a video channel here, right? Might help you launch your channel, and I'm kind of interested in as well. Uh, I'm selling lady shoes for six weeks. Uh, yeah. I know nothing about shoes and less about lady shoes. And um, apparently next week I've got a bunch of stuff arriving from Romania that uh, is a head week toy. I have no concept what that is. What looks like an action figure? I can't recognize. I just know it's not the Undertaker or Hulk Hogan. Or, or something cool like that. It's some bizarre name. But I'm sure one quarter of the world is amazing. But I'm going to try and flog these things and make a profit. And in part, I'm getting to my question in a minute. In part, I do this on purpose because I quite like the idea of saying to people, see, you can get lots of good free advice. You can get lots of well-priced free advice. What I don't like, and you, you must see the same in, in gambling and poker, is all these fake gurus, the furus, selling the super expensive courses. You, know, you said jokingly at the start, it's not like there are five steps you can follow and automatically win money. And the phrase you said, I thought, yeah, that's right. There's a lot of work to it. So, you know, I've been selling all this stuff and I do it as low hassle as I can. And it still takes a bit of listing, a bit of response to the, to the, set, to the buyers. And I've still got to post the thing on. But here's the question. I don't even fully understand the rules of poker. Yeah. I vaguely remember them if I played the group of people that know them. And I've yeah. maybe got a couple of things written down to remind me, but I don't yeah. really remember them. How long are we saying it's going to take me to be able to sit there for a couple of evenings a week and make, what did you say, 200 a month or 200 a week? But let's say with 200 a month is a nice, easy target. Yeah. All right. So 200 a month, if I'm making 200 a month, that's really useful money because yeah. I'm either going to need that 200 quid a month for something or I could put that into a bit of investment or I could put half of it towards my new PS5 and 100 quid into crypto. I could have a bit of a play with it, but I'm assuming I'm going to need a poker pot of money, aren't I? Correct, yeah. So walk so me through I, how much that is. So to start off with, if you were a brand new player, I'd say 50 quid. Okay. I'd and say 50 how long... Quid. Go on, sorry. Yeah, 50 quid. Because the, the way we look at it in poker is you need it because of that variance that we spoke about, because you can go on a run of, of losing, um, you know, two nights in a row, two and a half nights, three nights in a row. Mm. You're going to have to, that, that could happen the very first three nights. You're going to have to deal with that. So we, we always have it. If the buy in for the table, if to turn up to the table, you need two quid, which is the very entry level of, of poker on Poker Stars. We suggest you have a minimum of 30 quid in your bankroll. So 50 quid, I would say, 30 to 50 quid. And if you're a brand new player, probably 50 because you're going to make a few mistakes the first week. So how well, this might be a really stupid question, but I'm thinking it and I'm guessing other people might be too. How well do I need to know poker to be able to do this? So I'm going to sit down and read all the rules again, or am I going to yeah. largely remember them when I start playing? Or is that just going to be expensive for me? Oh, it's, it's a good question, and and it's something me and my mate have spoken about. Where we, we're probably going to have a few guinea pigs. I think when the coaching first goes off, we're going to offer some free coaching to maybe ten people, and really to really find out what that time scale is. So, my guess would be a month. My okay. guess would be, because the 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 downside of you not knowing some of the basics is I'll have to teach you very basic terms, very basic things that. If someone had been playing for five years but didn't happen to be a winner, I could save a lot of time. But you also wouldn't have any of the bad habits, which I'd have to sort of erase. So it's a bit like, yeah, I, I think my guess would be a month, but we, we have got a plan to, to sort of take five to ten people on, offer them free, the, the complete journey for free, 
So to... I'm guess I'm guessing just as a small promotion for your site here uh, or for your channel here, you probably want people to start responding to you about that right now, don't you, Craig? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you absolutely. probably want to put a video out tonight, don't you, Craig? Saying sign up here to be uh, to be considered. Would that would that be a fair bet, Craig? This is why I'm here, Graham, for that kind of advice. That's what we're going to in just a moment. <laughs> I've got a question for you from River. Are you a game theory GTO player? Uh, I'm not, only because I do agree with it. And there are parts of game theory that I think we take on. But I think at the very at the very bottom of poker, the micro stakes, we call it, $2, $5, $10, you, you don't need to be that advanced. And game theory uh, is quite advanced takes a lot of effort. All you need to know are some fundamentals and a little bit of exploitative. That tends to be exploitative versus game theory. I'm getting a bit nerdy here, which I didn't want to do. But um, I would say no. Little bit, little little nuggets, the more advanced you get and you can earn more money the more you learn it. But no, very basic exploitative poker. Okay, so um, we've got a couple of uh, other questions here. Jeff says, sorry, selling shivered, are we talking poker? Texas Hold'em. We are talking Texas Hold'em and we are talking how to consistently make a little bit of money thanks jeff uh from poker big bold and beautiful you see craig this is why you're gonna start doing this uh the poker videos were great for people watching you and great viewers and you you go ah oh, fantastic i've cracked this tiktok thing big bold and beautiful just said wait he teaches i mean offer courses so um i think there might be two people already that are ready to come and talk to you now i'm not saying everyone's going to come and sign up but let's talk about you building your channel building your yeah. sort of making that step so what's the first kind of thing you're thinking of or where you want to go with this? So, so like I said, when we, when we did it so successfully, this sort of bankroll challenge, we took $50 to 1000 How long we did that start... take you, sorry? Say again. How long did it take you, I'm sorry to ask? It took about two months. So from 50 to 1000 yes? About two months, but playing a lot. So it's always better to talk in hands, annoyingly. Okay. But about two months, and that was playing three or four nights a week how many hands is that it was about eighty thousand hands okay so listen here's the thing right because again uh, i've noticed and i've probably done a lot more tiktok than you have because i've got two thousand <laughs> videos and i do an hour to two hours live a day so i've got quite and i do all the comments i've got quite nuanced into what some people how people some people respond to stuff and you talk about concrete yeah. heads um, yeah. Some people go, yeah, but you know that's only like nine hundred and fifty quid over two months. You can't yeah. live on that, can you? And I gotta say, no, you can't live on nine hundred fifty. Well, you can, but it's not easy. It's not a great earner, and it's a lot of time. But if it's something you enjoy, five hundred quid a month, on top of everything else, and let's be clear, this is tax-free money, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, in the UK is tax-free. So. There's a lot to recommend this. So let's talk about this channel you've got. We might have a yep. few people interested in that. Uh, Fazi just goes, bruh. I don't know what that is. I'm too old to understand that. Uh, think... Can you say hi to me, Fazi? I just did. All right. So what is what is the thing you're thinking of in terms of growing your channel or your, your TikTok or whatever? So when we were when we were going through this journey, we, we started to take study very seriously. So we've developed players just doing this challenge. And, and learning and we got a bit addicted to the study of it but we read maybe 10 to 20 poker books and a few other books on the side um nicholas taleb and things like that to try and learn uh, about how to advance our poker and we started to realize that there, there wasn't much material out there for low stakes poker for real entry level poker it was always talking about higher stakes than 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 beginners play who were breaking even every month, didn't make much money, things like that. And we also noticed that it was a very certain type of poker player that tended to write a book, which was uh, very, very analytical, didn't have very easy to read books. Um, you know, I've got no education whatsoever. I'm a bit dyslexic. I like pictures more than words. When yeah. I do, I read because it's exercise for my brain, not because I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and I just knew the, the, the book I wanted to read wasn't out, as well as there was no coaching available for entry level players. Because if you think about it, if I'm going to give up an hour of my time, uh, you can't really do that for less than 50 quid. If you're you've got to pay for your own pension and you've got to pay for your own holiday and you're also a successful poker player. So to get one to one coaching 
we you could, we couldn't really find anything for less than 50 quid and when when you're only starting out and your entire bankroll is 50 quid you don't want to spend and you're going to need more than an hour so you can't you can't budget 500 quid so to, so what's so what's your solution what are you offering so our solution is to hold um hold video calls with four or five players at once that way it can be affordable for them they can split that 40 50 quid together and the reason i think it's going to work is because of the analytics of your play we can get you to download the poker software that you're going to use to play anyway and we can look at how you're playing poker we can prep a little bit beforehand with the core we can spot a couple of your errors that we know you're making anyway because if you're a losing player i, I can guess the top five reasons and these five players are all going to have the same questions. They're all going to make the same mistakes. So as I'm coaching one, the other four or five are going to get the same the same input and outtake from it because they're going to have made the same mistakes, be asking the same questions. So it's to try and coach people through that way a little bit more as a group rather than this one-to-one -one coaching. So what's the gap between where you are now and where you want to be to launch that? Because when you first contacted me, you said there's a bunch of thoughts you've got about growing a TikTok or marketing or making that step. So what are the kinds of questions or thoughts you've got on this? Because this so is going to apply to anybody, isn't it, regardless of poker or whatever. Me, me and my mate are trying to do this all at once. So we're trying to write a book, design right. this coaching, the whole structure of it, the, where we're going to do it, the format, the price range. We're trying to build a network. We have no network whatsoever. No one in the poker community knows that we exist. Right. So we've got to somehow build a network to eventually sell this to. My first question is, you've obviously had things in the past that have been uh, uh, have been businesses to educate people, whether it's on presenting or, or things like that. Maybe your jobs in the past allowed you to build a network and things like that. But I imagine there was many angles that you were you were you were trying to sort out at once. Should we focus on one thing? Should we just write the book and get that done in six months? Should we then do the, 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 the coaching, get our product polished and then go and build a network? Or should we just do everything at once and learn as we go? And at the moment, we're two weeks in and we are juggling so many things. Like I've got this TikTok account on the go and I've got to think of a video every now. You know, I'm trying to do paragraphs of the book at the same time and research. We're also trying to study poker. So I guess that's my first question. Are we, are we doing the right thing by juggling all these things and learning or should we focus on one thing at a time? All right, here's what you're going to do. You've got to stop trying to do everything. The man who tries to catch two rabbits is going to catch neither. So right. here's what you've got to do. You've got to figure out what's the first thing I can do to get myself started. So you're trying to run this channel a bit. Hello, Angel Dust. Uh, Sim, I can't answer you right now. I'm sorry, we're not talking about the stock market. So um, you, you've got to pick the thing you're going to do first. So when I very first started my training company, Right. The basic of it was this. A training company needed the skill that I had and I had some other people I could do it with. I went and sold what I did to them. And that was it. I had no other marketing, no other customers, no other clients. And this, because I'm very old, was before the Internet. It was 25 years ago, 26 years ago. So um, that was the way it all started. And then it was a case of you build up and you build up and you build up. Now, what I might say could be slightly confrontational on this, but I think you're wasting your time writing a book. because It's going to take you six months and then launch it. Launch it to whom? Because respectfully, there's no dearth of books on poker. Right. Cool. I'm not going to run out of books to read on poker. So the problem I've got is why would I buy your book on poker? Because not yeah. only there's dozens of others, but those others are from people I've heard of. If I'm interested in poker or they are. Um, from people who are famous on the telly. If you get on the telly, that's it. Your problems are solved because yeah. there are a million people offering property advice. But if you're a property guy on the telly, your price goes up an extra zero, even though it's the same book. It's the same cookeries, uh, uh, cookery shows, chefs. So I think your book at the moment is the thing you think if I do it, it's going to look quite cool because I can go author of and here we go. But the, 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 Yeah, I know. The stunning, slightly depressing result is... No one gives a toss because everyone's written a book these days. And Amazon, it's very, very easy to game the system and get a, a bestseller. It certainly was. Look up Mike Winnett on YouTube. You'll find him on LinkedIn initially. He grew from zero to several thousand, doing a lot of spoof videos on the world's worst businessman. Um, and then he, he, he started, he's moved on to YouTube now and he puts really good content out about what he calls contrepreneurs, right? People that are uh, doing high pressure sales techniques to sell dodgy courses. 
poker courses, for example. And he, <laughs> he takes the mickey out of them a lot. But one of the interesting things he's, he's talked about is this whole um, concept. He, he did a video on it. He got a book to the number one position on Amazon bestseller by basically gaming their system. So he's pointed out what many of us know. Everybody says, da, 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 coach, speaker, thought leader, and three times author. Unfortunately, any of us can publish any old crap these days and we call ourselves an author. Yeah. Now, I think you ditch the authoring for a bit. You haven't got time to do it. Let me quickly pick up these messages. Angels asked, yeah, hi, hello. That's okay. Great to listen to see what's going on. Yeah, this is Craig. Craig is uh, building a poker channel. But this conversation now is all about how do we launch a business, move into a side hustle, get things going. Can you do more eBay videos, please? They make me laugh a lot. Thank you. I will do. Uh, have a good USP, says Angel. I think that's a great idea. And that's where I'm going to next. Yeah. I think you need to focus on your USP because your USP when we've been talking tonight isn't clear remotely. Okay. So so what's the thing you do, right? So we take low stakes poker. Right? I kind of don't understand that. What is that? Is that ten pounds, a hundred pounds? I don't know. No, 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 no. That's not a question, not a question for now. I know, I know we've been talking. Okay. But in terms of your message, what's your message? Right? Right. So I've lit I've ditched the book. Now, do you then go for building the site? and launching it, or do you go for building the profile? Well, you're going for B2C, you're going for business to people, you're not going business to business. So I've only ever really worked business to business. So I've done that for 24 years. Last year, there was a small pandemic thing, and all of my businesses shut down overnight, which is why I now do everything from here. So I've now re-switched all of my business to being online. I had two months of no revenue. During that time, I thought, I wonder if I can find any B2C customers. So I started working on TikTok. That was why I started messing around on TikTok. And I started in June last year. Now, the point is this. Until you find out who your customers are, you don't know what book they want to read. Until you know who your customers are, you don't know what their problems are. I know you can second guess what the five mistakes they always make are, but there's going to be something about the way they explain it to you that you go, ha, ha, ha. So now you can write from their perspective. Makes so sense. sometimes, yeah. By the way, everybody on this channel, um, you've seen sometimes I put videos out and people have got really pissed off about what I've said. I'm going to let you know it's a small secret. I usually do that on purpose. And I do it because I know it trips some trigger points for some people. Because what we're doing on TikTok, this is all a process. It's like a process of playing poker. So your first bet has surely got to be to build up your audience. Because at that moment, you've got, what, a couple of thousand people on your channel? Yeah. So I think, I think TikTok's an amazing channel to, to, to grow an audience on. It's like LinkedIn on crack. It's like, it's like probably YouTube used to be. It's incredibly fast. It's massively addictive. And you've got some people liking what you do already. The problem is that whilst you're putting your poker stuff out, and I think you should still do that because that's got a mass appeal, you're missing some of the people who actually want to know we teach poker. That's true. So your concept has got to be explained in two sentences. And respectfully, at the moment, you're doing two paragraphs. I, I, right. I, yeah. Now, so, so if I used to sum up my um, business now, right, if I want to strap life on my business, it's very simple. Business done better. That's it. Those three words. Now, the less you can explain it in. So you, you know it's got to be new players. You know it's got to be people who like to make the idea. Of money, but you don't want to emphasize the gambling side, do you? Absolutely not. No. Yeah, you're so, right. So you have a problem with that that you need to solve. What you've got to solve is people who maybe like gambling or people who maybe want to be better at poker. Uh, you know, who are these people you're trying to find? People who want a bit of extra side hustle money? Are they suitable for your course? Who are your targets? Because you probably don't want the pissed up poker players because it's going to be too slow for them, right? Um, I think you're right. I'm honestly not sure. I think... I think we thought about players that played the game for fun, enjoyed it, and 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 want and, and that's it. Wanted to to develop their skill and, and make two hundred quid a month or five hundred quid a month. So that's what you've got to come up with something really cool, flashy like that. So River has just reminded me his tagline is "Let's simplify crypto." Nice. That's it. So you find his channel. Now you know from glancing at his channel what it means now the the problem with under the gun is if i'm in poker i know but the i might not be in poker but i might like the idea of two three four hundred pounds a month as a side hustle yeah so my company name one of my company names which i'm not, I'm not going to tell you i mean they're very easy to find but i'm not, not going to tell you um makes no sense whatsoever but when i picked it in my late 20s i thought it was very clever and funny and amusing 
So my problem now is that I have to demonstrate that although I have a sense of humour and, and, a, and a, a, you know, a bit of world wideness and whatever else, and, and I can deal with things, I'm also quite small C conservative and quite sensible. Now, you've got a negative connotation with poker. Now, you might decide you don't care. You might decide that people are put off by poker won't suit your thing. Or you might decide, actually, that's that's poor thinking. You see, what did match betting and Betfair do that was very, very clever? What they figured out was ways to say this is not gambling, it's match betting. Now, I know the truth of the word it's not gambling, but a lot of people can see that it's a mathematical approach. A lot of us think we're far more clever than we are. I include myself in that. So a lot of people think that we're really quite smart. We all, we all think we've kind of figured stuff out. And, and what Betfair did, I mean, the name's pretty clever, Betfair. What, what Betfair did was to explain their proposition. It's a mathematical thing. It's strategy. It's numbers. It's, and that applied and interested a certain type of the population. Now, are they your people? Because at the moment, you don't know. And it, it's a very broad thing you're going for. Um, but a couple of the messages coming in. Uh, Angel's come in with, what's your business values and message? Um, uh, uh, Angel was the one who said also about, you know, you, you need your USP. So where are we? I've got to just also uh, notice Oban McLeod, by the way. Thank you for following me. Very good op option, Oban. Um, what, what do you think about all that? So, yeah, I think you're right. The, the more and more points that you've made. Uh, what, what was the name? Sorry. Uh, oh, that's uh, Angel, uh, River Crypto said, let's simpl simplify crypto. Um, yeah. And Angel just said, what's your business values and message and what's your USP? Yeah, I think now, now you and, and, and Angel have, 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 have asked a couple of questions like that. I think, I think you're right. I think we, we probably haven't thought about some of those fundamental questions because my US, our USP is that there, there isn't affordable coaching for beginner poker players. And I think that's not quite a USP, but that's the gap in the market that we've identified. Right, right. that's the gap in the market. That's not your USP. Yeah, I think I think because when I say to you, don't forget, right? TikTok is a minute tops. Um, I think I put a video out recently saying it was a three minute version because I've seen a few of those going around. Um, the, the, the TikTok, I, I get these announcements from TikTok saying these three minute things are coming, so I put it out. And since then, everyone's complained it's not true, but TikTok is a minute window, <laughs> but most successfully it's eight to fifteen seconds. Yeah. So I spent about eight nine months putting my videos out, not caring how long they were but try to keep them, you know, not going right up to the minute. So they're like 53 seconds. And only two months ago, I thought, I'm getting killed here by some other people in the same niche and all of their videos are 15 to 20 seconds. I need right. to rethink and revamp and rework. And I continually now hammer my videos now. Some, I don't always manage it. My Facebook marketplace videos, uh, which by the way, if you're a fan of my channel, there was one went out earlier on today it's only had 88,000 views, so do go and take a look. It needs your support. Uh, it's the sixth one in the series. In the series. Um, but the <laughs> first, one did a, first one did a million and a half. But, but my, my point remains that, that nearly all my videos now are coming in comfortably under 30 seconds. Often they're 20 to 25. Now, that requires an assiduous attention to detail to cut out everything else. Remember, you've got three seconds from when your video pops on the screen to make me go, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Now, your videos are working at the moment because they say poker and there are famous people in them. Yeah. So people want to see Matt Damon get beaten up by Chappie, right? Yeah. So, um, and Amarino Slim. I remember my dad had a book on him in the 1970s. So those things are going to make people pause. But you've got to do the tougher thing now because you've got to get your face on the camera. Yeah. You know that. Everyone knows yeah. that. We don't really like those videos that have got the uh, the text coming up, the automated voice. We don't like them. No, I know. So I think you need to get yourself on the camera. And I think you've got to now, when you start getting yourself on the camera, you've got to figure out what it is you're offering. And here's the next trap you can fall into. You've got to figure a way to offer value and entertainment without selling anything. Yeah. Because if you start saying... In our new coaching course, I'm going to go, fuck off, it's a sale. So I don't <laughs> want that. Right? We all do the same thing. If it comes up promoted, next one. So you've got to figure a way to start to build interest in what you do. That's what I think you're going to go. Um, Angel points out, if you look at big business, they have their core values on their website. 
So yeah. you, know, you can have a tagline. What you can think about is mission, vision, and values. Your vision is where do you want to go? What's your plan? Where, where are you going? What's your, what's your global ambition? That's, that's, that's the vision. The mission is how you get there, and the values are what do you stand for? Now, you might go down that sort of route. You might go down for a tag, like a Let's Simplify Crypto, that sums up what you do in three or five words. You Makes don't want to even... You what, sorry? I really like that. Mission, vision, and values. That are core values as well. I've, I've, you know, I've read a lot of books on companies that, that are successful for having core values, and yet I've not, not thought about doing that yet. So, yeah, really useful. I think, I think it's a sound idea because what it means is that every time you put something out, you can decide, is this helping what my idea is for this channel? Yeah. So if we've, if we've got the book to one side, because we're starting to build the way we explain our book from the audience interaction, you're also starting to get useful feedback about what your offer should be. Because at the moment, you think that people want to sit around in groups of five and do coaching with you. And you might be right. But what you don't know is that actually people might be prepared to pay £400 for a one-on-one -on -one with you. Now, yeah. you don't know. Now, I'm not saying that's true, but you don't know, know you that. Yeah, yeah, you don't know that until you start to kind of feel your way into it a little bit. Yeah. So I, I think the tricky thing is you've got to figure a way to, to get this kind of conversation going. So I've, I've put 2,000 plus videos out. My first months were, if you were to ever go to my profile and skim all the way to the back, which will take you forever, because accidentally you'll hit one of them and it will show you the video. You're like, nuts. And when you go back, you're going to write to the start again. So you scroll away through. If you go back to my first couple of videos and you discount them, because all of May, my videos were, were just random things I was trying, trying on, on TikTok. And in June last year, I started to get into my stride a little bit. And I started to put out stuff. And when people reacted to it, I thought, ah, great. So what's my channel about? It's about making and saving money. It's about starting a side hustle or a business. It's about... It's about doing a, um, an interview and doing it better on camera. If there's those kind of things I can help you with, that's the channel. Therefore, anything I do is linked in that kind of sphere. So predominantly, it's me giving some ideas. Occasionally, it's me being slightly provocative. Uh, once in a while, I'm taking the piss out of myself, the, the big house series. Uh, even the Facebook Marketplace video, which is just comedy, reflected what I did when I was trying to sell the women's shoes. In fact, the very first video is selling shoes. Uh, based on what I'd experienced on Spock and, and Facebook. In other words, everything, and I'll occasionally do a random one. Um, I did one a couple of days ago about what's a movie that's a classic you don't get, right? And that's had 120,000 views. But that's not my core message. But I've got enough of my core message so that people know there's going to be something entertaining on there, but it's largely about business. Now, if you did the same thing with your world, so it's poker, do we talk about live poker? Do we talk about poker stars? Do we do reviews? Because now you can start to offer me interesting views and opinions. This is why I like poker stars. This is why I don't like this channel. Honest review. This new one's just arrived. It's based in Mexico. I'm going to play it with you. I've got 30 quid. I'm going to show you what happens after half an hour. Uh, you're into bonuses. Um, I'm going to give you the top five bonuses you can sign for right now as a brand new player. Yeah, you're right. I really need to think about yeah, that 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 potential customer and, and what videos are gonna are gonna are gonna keep them involved and keep them entertained and turn them it's into a, they it's trust. Engage, yeah, it's engagement, it's interest, it's all of these things. And put out of your mind trying to sell anything at this stage. Because what will happen is after a bit, somebody will start saying, Do you do like one on one mentoring? And by yeah. then you've got a bit more of an idea. Plus you've had time to start to build what you're doing in the background. So the build of whatever the offer is going to be, you start to formulate that now, but don't sink hundreds or thousands into a website or a system or a process because it might not be what people want. Yeah. Let's pick up some, uh, some points here as well. Some great questions. Um, uh, Angel's, but Angel's on a roll tonight. Thanks Angel. Uh, people buy into you, build a rapport with your viewer and customers. Absolutely. See, I, I, I hadn't got into social. I didn't understand social media until July 2019. Right, I'd been on LinkedIn forever, and I occasionally, like everybody, put a post on it. I had no idea why I didn't go, and that was it. And in roughly June, July 2019, I started consistently posting, and I figured people like 
something a bit entertaining, a bit quirky, a bit interesting, a bit sexy, a bit naughty, a bit dangerous, a bit shocking, whatever emotion you want, but a bit of a story about your thing. And if you can explain with a bit of comedy or any of those other emotions, great. And as you do that, for six months, I was putting these things out, my engagement was going up and up and up. And after six months, people actually started going, do you do this? Could I buy that? Would that work? Then, of course, the pandemic came and changed everything. Now, exactly the same thing on TikTok. You've seen those channels. And I've noticed this recently because I'm, I'm on a bit of a mission at the moment to grow this channel. Um, thank you, everybody, by the way, to getting, getting us almost 130,000. It's brilliant. Um, so that, that's the next one. We're, we're, we're about 100 of hitting 130,000. So um, I'm on a bit of a mission for that. And I've looked at other people in my niche. And I've noticed that while some of them have gone boom and exploded some of them have got very strongly into selling a particular thing and they then kind of level out because everyone knows that's what the channel's all about selling a thing so that's why i said to you right at the start i'm really keen on not selling a thing what can we sell what, uh, what rather what can we talk about that will help um go on yeah i was gonna say it makes complete sense and, and in all honesty i think uh me and me and my mate I weren't even really starting this as a as an end goal to to having a, a successful career in in poker selling or whatever it's 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 the it's the uh it's the achievement of having to do this and the, and the fun and the journey we're going to have in building a a poker community and getting our fun like you say fun stories out there tips and tricks all that kind of nuggets that we have we have something to offer and it felt it felt silly not to not to try and get it out so there so that's what you do with TikTok and you start to shape in your mind. I've, I've started to and then held back on launching a club off the back of this channel several times, as people who know this channel will know. And as, as recently as that, when we got to 100,000, I was saying, I want to get the 0.1 club going, right? So that's 0.1% of the 100,000, uh, 100 people. And the reason I'm still holding back from it, I know I sound like I'm kind of making ideas and then pulling it back, is because I've seen other people get to a point and then they sell a course and then they don't go past that because everyone thinks that's all they're now selling. Yeah. So I've got some stuff in, in <clears> place now. Actually, I think it's going to give that for people that want it, but it's it's a, it's pulled back a little bit. Um, River comes back. Tiered pricing structure is key, in my opinion. I think that's a great point. Um, you, you, you know, we, we know that there's a lot of places offering a, a five pound, the, net, the Netflix pricing. Um, strategy. So I think a Netflix pricing strategy is brilliant. What's what's your absolute level price? So I've got yeah. on my profile now a button that says buy me a coffee um, because lots and lots of people over the last 10 months have been very kind and said I want to buy you a beer. That'll be delightful. Hit the button and, I, and then you can buy me a coffee. But I'm next moving to a book a Zoom call with me. Right? And there's going to be a charge for that but I've had probably 30 or so one-to-ones with people over the last 10 months and I literally can't do it anymore. I just, I, I don't have the capacity anymore for it. So I've got to put a charge on it. It's a modest charge, but I'm putting that charge on it. And I think that has come out of when I've done stuff and then the reaction or not, I've got to videos. And I think a yeah. tiered pricing is smart because if that goes well, then I can offer a tier up. I thought, I thought that... a little bit, about, I, read, uh, I read Undercover Economist recently um, where he, he talks about how coffee shops figure out how much to charge for a coffee so obviously coffees next to london eye are going to cost a lot more than a coffee in Wibbenshaw, where i'm from so he said what they do that that little trick you know when you when you buy a coffee and they say oh do you want uh you know the, the, the this new fancy coffee we've got this blonde blonde roast for an extra 20p or yeah. do you want sprinkles on for an extra 10p well yeah. the more and more people say yes they know listen coffee can go up coffee can go up in that store because we've figured out that they're willing to pay more for a coffee here. So, uh, yeah, we have spoken about those little those little tips and tricks to find out how far we can go, a gold level, a, a silver level. But yeah, that's, that's, that's really good because that is something we've, we've thought about before. Um, Angels come in. I personally would build the business and have the book as a secondary to support the business. Um, I think exactly the same, Angel. I, I think you put the book to one, forget the book. You know, that will come out of conversations and discussions. River then yeah. comes in. Also assume everyone will say too good to be true. So answer it before they ask. Now, I think yeah. that's a really, really key point because yeah, um, yeah, River was obviously involved in crypto and um, 
you know that that is what that is i will however say river was telling me about cardano uh, a cryptocurrency just about two weeks ago which has gone up 18 percent today so i'm i'm quite chuffed that uh, i i was chatting to river and i did decide to buy a little bit of uh, cardano so that was all good um uh, ankle receive the bonuses on both can you have okay uh, let me just answer this uh, we're, we're talking about side hustles and TikTok um, ankle you can have a help to buy ISA and a lifetime ISA but you can only get the bonuses for one if you're buying or when you get your first home or your retirement remember the lifetime ISA is for home or um, retirement I don't believe the help to buy is 2.4k is the maximum on the help to buy four is the maximum on the late on the Lisa so you might want to think about that uh, what are your three top pieces of advice in a nutshell uh, I'm going to come back to the question in a moment, if I may, Joker. Are you okay for about another five, ten minutes or so here, Craig? Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Uh, let me just pick up before these other points. Um, right, so River Rivers, River and Angel are, are competing here. Um, this is some fantastic input. River, title, how to turn poker into a side hustle, make £500 per month playing a game, exclamation mark. Yeah, I've definitely thought about that sort of, because side hustle is such a fashionable term at the moment. Of sneaking yeah. that somewhere, sneaking that somewhere, because everybody understands what side hustle means. It's yeah, I can have a job, I can do it in the evenings, I can earn an extra yeah. five hundred. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's that's great. I like that one. But just, listen, just, here's go on. Just repeat that river one to me again. Sorry. How to turn poker into a side hustle? Make five hundred pounds per month playing a game. Right, he's even put the figure in there as well, which is great. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, Angel points out people buy you and your story absolutely true now how much of your story you want to tell is up to you so for me it's quite interesting the the part of your story that um i was really kind of thinking that's interesting he said i'm dyslexic and i don't really re i read to, to exercise my brain and i like pictures more and the the high level analysis stuff i don't really get now that's quite interesting because my suspicion is large numbers of people you know Shit, I think like that. So I think that's a really key point. People do buy into you and your story. Um, I'm going to come back to that point about the, um, the three pieces of advice in a nutshell, because that's a good close, I think. The other thing I might say is when you start to build up your audience, when you build up your channel to be entertaining. So TikTok is for entertainment. Now, they've got learn on TikTok as a, as a hashtag, which, which I use all the time. Um, but the, the, the point is people come on TikTok largely to be entertained. Now, entertainment might mean learning how to steer a narrow boat or prune your roses or watch a young lady juggle around in a tight vest. But whatever it is that you're into watching and a proportion of the 742 million monthly average users are going to be into poker, whatever it is, I'm here to be entertained. So you can educate me, but I need a bit of I need a bit of sizzle on it. So in looking at the sizzle and the substance at the moment, you've got loads of substance but your sizzle is full of fat. So what yeah. I need you to look at doing is cutting through that. The dyslexic story, you might find it's a good way of explaining and people going, yeah, I feel like that too. The story about people getting a bit drunk and messing around all night, a lot of people are going to relate to that because a lot of people have done that. Hell, I've done that and I don't even understand poker and I don't gamble. So pretty much everyone's done that. So those kind of things, and you will dis you'll discover that and learn that through the videos and the comments back you get. And what you're now starting to do is you're designing both your offer, your title, your story, ultimately your book, out of the experience you've got of the rapport with everybody. Let's pick up these other couple of three points, and then perhaps we'll close on that uh, three top tips in a nutshell. So there's a challenge for you. You've got, you've got a moment to think about that one. Um, uh, so uh, legend says SRK18K. I don't know who you're describing as a legend, SRK, but um, it's my channel, so I'm going to take it. Thank you. Uh, it could have been you, Craig, I guess. Um, Angel's now laughing. That's all good stuff. Uh, Alona Chave, hi, good to see you. Coca, thank you for following me. Very, very good option. Um, we'll always say that. Uh, oh, hang on, Rivers back again. Rivers, Rivers taken on Angel. He's not having it. You don't need to be maths genius to win at poker. How I made my dyslexia work for me. That's a, it's a cracking, cracking title. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd have that's to, like, I'd have to get listen, here's, here's another thing you could do. You could take those titles. You could take the kinds of things that you're thinking of doing and they could be the first line of your video. So yeah. find somebody whose channel you like and watch a couple of their videos, right? doesn't matter who it is, but anybody you like, um, <laughs> check, check, out, check out River's channel as well. It, uh, go through a bundle of people, right? 
And you'll notice the ones that have got often the big spikes of numbers, they always follow the same kind of format. They nearly always start with a thing, because that's our three seconds to make you go, I better watch this. Yeah. Now, sometimes they've got great taglines at the start, but nobody's watched them. TikTok is like that sometimes. Or maybe the great tagline wasn't as great as I thought it was. Right, so okay. then what happens with new TikTok people, River, I'm talking to you now, they start saying, I've been shadow banned. I've been shadow banned. Oh, my God, I've been shadow banned. That got 137,000. That's not 200. What's going on? Well, TikTok sometimes does weird stuff, but it's nearly always not shadow banning. It's nearly always there's something we've not got right. There's something the audience doesn't like. Now, you can, ki you can kind of check all that with these videos. So your opening line, does that gather yeah. attention? If it does... That could be a book title. It could be a course title. It could be a, a company tagline. It could be anything. That's great, yeah. And then in 15 to 20 seconds, you've got to tell your story and give me your useful piece of advice. That's it. That's how long you've got. Makes um, sense. Make, make your bank account go gaga with my poker face. <laughs> Gary said, D, that, that is tremendous. Friend. <laughs> uh, Craig, thank you for following me. Uh, make your bank account go gaga. All right, let's pick up this last question then, because I, I think we are running towards the end of this live. Um, and we've just hit 130,000. Thank you so much. Uh, all good stuff. All good stuff. By the way, uh, you might find that when you start putting videos out and they go well, and then you do a live, you can help often promote the video a little bit. Because what I found is if I do a live immediately after launching a video, it seems to give it a bit of a push. So uh, that's sometimes why I keep checking down here to see if the video is going on. That said, my newest video, what advice would you give your younger self? I only 283. It's barely shifting. I think I've been shadow banned. Right, uh, <laughs> Craig, thank you. Let's get this last question then. What are the uh, what are the three bits of top advice in a nutshell relating to everything we've been talking about? Then, Craig, what do you reckon? In terms of in terms of the business or in terms of poker? Well. Your choice. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'm go, for, go for the business guessing, then. I'm go the on things then. I, learn, I think from everyone. I think I, I, I'm definitely going to take on board the the mission, the vision, and the the, the values. I think that's something I'm going to get together with with my mate, and I'm, I'm really excited to actually think about that more. We keep thinking about the the gap, and we keep thinking about players we know that would want to do this, but we've not properly thought about that to keep us consistent with every decision we then make in the future. So, mission, vision, and values I really like. I'm going to take that on board. I think uh, I think you're right. I think with the book, that's I'm wasting a lot of experience and information and knowledge by writing it now. I've got so much to learn in the next year with with dealing with this guinea pigs that I'm going to have, dealing with our first customers, that to write the book now is actually a mistake, even if I had the time. Um, as well as the the, the tagline stuff uh, as well. I think I think you're right. I'm not, I've not thought about how I'm going to transition from a, here's lots of fun poker content that we all enjoy because it's Phil Ivey or Kevin Hart playing poker. But, and I've, I've really struggled to put that those, those, taglines i've got to think about after we talk about the core value values after we talk about the mission and then think about those taglines that are going to are going to quickly grab the attention of the people that i think fall under that category of, of who we're trying to trying to gain so yeah and basically yes yeah, staying consistent and understanding understanding who i'm trying to uh who are trying to attract that's really good rivers rivers i, I know you said that you you, you got five ten more minutes and we're kind of at that point but uh, Rivers just coming with a, a really interesting perspective here, actually. I, I'll just throw this in because um, Rivers says, I think with respect, people care, caught. I think with respect, people care more about results than about you. Eventually, they care later. Now, River, I think you're right if your proposition is, I'm going to show you how to make money. Um, and I know, obviously, in your video, I'm going to show you how to do crypto. But where I don't think you're correct is this there are a million people at least offering poker advice on however many platforms. So the question is, why am I going to stop at this one? So you're absolutely right. Of course, results are important, but that's not what leads this. We all think we're highly analytical animals. We're not. We are driven. It said, look, you're walking through the woods, right? There's a movement. Your brain sorts into the same four things. Do I run away from it? Do I fight it? Do I eat it? Or do I mate with it? 
That's how basic we all are. Uh, Ricky Gervais says we're basically chimpanzees with brains the size of planets. What do you think is going to go wrong? That's what we are. So to your point, River, I think you're right. Of course, I need some reason why um, I'm going to stay with this or I'm going to get into this. But there's something that's going to make me stop. and It's going to make me come back. So, River, look at your videos. You are bright, smiling. You tend to go for a close up like this. You use lots of bright color. You point to the various signs. There's a lot going on. You use fast editing. And that's all about you and your personality and how you come across in the video. If you turned up proper crypto nerd, hello, I'm going to show you how to die. I'm going to lose the will to live before we get to the results. So what you've done there is mastered your personality and put that on the camera. That's kind of what I'm talking about. I think you're right about results, but. What's really interesting about that, Graham, is that's the exact reason that me and Matt, my, my, my mate, decided to do this because one of the, the biggest study, um, the biggest um, mater study material we had was the most successful small stakes poker player in history. He's got the results that beat anybody at those low, low stakes. Yeah. But he has no charisma whatsoever. He is an absolute stiff board his book is terrible at, yeah. at being able to read properly and, and go back and use the reference guide and it was that yeah. moment me and and matt decided do you know what we there's so many people like us that that can talk to people that have a little bit more empathy with with the average poker player yeah we can do this if he can do this we can do this so you're absolutely right his his numbers aren't great his book sales aren't great and he's the most successful Mike Stakes well, player this, in this is that this is a mistake lots of people make. Person who's an expert at X will be brilliant at teaching X. It's very rarely true. Pre-pandemic, I used to speak at a conference usually once or twice a week, every week. I've spoken all over Europe, around about twenty different countries. Um, I've spoken at some huge conferences, several hundred people. It's quite quite normal for me, right? And I often speak at a series of people, and there are many other people speaking. And you know, I'm usually not in terms of the youngest, but in terms of uh, career status or you know well known or I've often been on the same ticket as very famous people and I can often deliver a better response and experience to most people because I'm very good at what I do some people however walk into because they are you know they have a status or they're famous whatever else and people lose their nut even though objectively they're quite poor speakers the other problem is you'll get you'll see it at work conferences. We'll bring out the pensions expert or the health and safety expert. Oh, my God, shoot me now, because those people massive experience, 40 years in the job, drilled through each of their fingers at some point in their career, can tell you everything, but can't convey the message And that. Although none of us like to admit it, this is that sizzle and this is this is the content, right? That it, you've got to have this in balance. You've got to present as well as the thing you're presenting. Um, we, we do have a couple of other points, actually. Mate with it. Um, thank you, Big Bald and Beautiful, yeah. Um, Angel does point out, yes, you can add to the book as you get more experience or we'll make the book better. Jewish Bank has just thrown... We're not actually talking about crypto, um, Jewish Bank, but uh, Harry, Harry Livingston is very good with crypto. Um, thanks for that. That's uh, that's appreciate that. Get that comment in. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I take on board Rim's point, but it, it, we've got to have a reason to want to watch you. And your story there about the, the biggest winner is just boring to watch or boring to read that's the problem and tiktok is such a focused environment and if this is where you're going to grow your business that's what you're going to play to i was I watching had, i'm gone there's an accountant Stuart say total bull i'm an accountant and when i hold conferences i hold people gaze for hours <laughs> oh so what's what's that person's name uh Stuart james Stuart dawson Stuart. Stuart, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, completely, completely, <laughs> Stuart, completely agree with you that you hold the audience's attention. I think you're absolutely correct. And here's the difficulty. I've never seen you speak, so I don't know what you're comparing yourself to. I can pretty much walk into most conference centres and be better than most people who are in that area. Not better than most, but than everyone, but better than most. So I've never seen how good, bad or indifferent you are. Now, you may be stunning, and that's brilliant. I'm not saying that people who are good at something also can't explain it. What I'm saying, the mistake that people make is, and companies make is, we'll put this person on because they're good at this, this because they're good at this, this because they're good at this. Actually, you're better to find somebody who can present better, 
and maybe doesn't have that full level of experience because that's not the level of experience and knowledge that the audience needs. So I completely he also, agree with you. Uh, he also says he's a poker player who understands speech play, which it, which means that people who can who can talk well in at live tables, which is is which I, he probably is very charismatic. To be fair, those people tend to to know how to read people and bounce Excellent. off people people uncomfortable so he probably is i've seen people do that on the shows uh river yeah cheers appreciate that thank you uh bob hi um hi bob good to see you uh do we have any other final comments on your side there craig no the, the one thing i remind actually for the, the points to remember as well was that get, get ready for when people don't uh you know when people say i don't understand it i don't get it have that answer ready because i actually failed to do that with match betting we we uh, we at work had to do a train the trainer course. So someone like yourself, um, Graham, came in to teach us how to present, and I chose yeah. Matt Bet to present to people because I knew how difficult it was to explain. I did a pretty decent job with with a few props and, and a nice slideshow and five minutes of the retention. But to convince people what match betting is, I've actually failed ninety percent of the time. So. You, that, that's a really interesting thing I've got to think about. If I'm failing with match betting, I'm going to fail with poker. So I need to think about how to get a little bit more slick with that answer. Yeah, it, it, it's it's the biggest difficulty you have, right? So this is a positive thing. Perhaps that I might we, we might finish this live on, Craig. And I really appreciate it. It's been a, been a really good live. Uh, so thank you. But let me give you a sort of final point, which again, I think will apply to anybody who has to explain or present anything. One of the difficulties we have when we really know something. So I know that River really knows crypto. I know that Stuart really knows accountancy and he's, he's a very engaging person as well. But one of the biggest difficulties we have is we try and explain everything. And when we explain everything, the other guy gets none of it. You see it very often with solicitors or accountants, sorry, Stuart, um, or lawyers. And what they tend to do is they go, oh, well, it depends on this. It depends on this. And blah, blah. And, and often people misquote the 80-20 rule, the Pareto law, which I'm going to misquote now. <laughs> what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the broad strokes. We're trying to get you to the next step. So I don't need you to be amazing at presenting. I just need you to be the next stage better. And when you get that bit sorted, then I'll move you on to the next bit. And when you get that bit sorted, I'll move you on to the next bit again. And I think that's got to be one of the things you're doing with your 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 program here. You've got to help people get to the next stage. All I need to know at the first is your first task is, can you make me watch this video? And can you make me maybe think about watching another one? And can you get me to comment? And then that's if right. I can, can I come back for another one? And can I consider following you? Great, because now we're starting to build a bit of a one way, but a bit of a relationship. If I start going, oh, I love that bit. That was that really got me thinking. Now you're getting clues as to what people like and a bit more. It's I love step, that. yeah it's step by step by step by step look at this way right our, our final point here if you saw somebody in your workplace that you found very attractive and you wanted to get talking to them you're not going to walk up to them and go hi i'm craig let's get together let's buy a place let's do this let's have children let's adopt you're going to go straight into that you're going to do the time honored fashion of looking at them for a bit walking past them occasionally, bumping into them at the water cooler, bumping into them a few more times, trying to get a bit of a conversation going. That's kind of where we're going, a long, long, long process. That's kind of what we're going to be doing with this. Um, right, Ibra Kebab says hi. Ibra Kebabs, we're about to close this one. Uh, I think it's been a really good live. Craig, thank you very, very much. No, thank you for your time, Graham. Thank you. Uh, cheers. Um, final comments from you, or is that, is that or, or are you kind of at the, uh, the, the, the finish point? Only other than I'm, I'm, I'm in awe that you managed to read these comments and do a live at the same time. Apologies to uh, to Stuart, who's made a few more comments. Uh, so I'm really struggling to uh, hold the live and read the comments. So uh, that'll That's be right. a skill develop as well over the next few months. There's a lot going on. Big, bold and beautiful. Can we watch these live video on your YouTube channel if we miss the live session on TikTok? Um, yeah, we absolutely can. Big, bold and beautiful. Um, Pretty much after I close this, I'm going to stick. Well, how am I going to do it tonight? In reality, no, I'm not. I'm going to go and watch Sopranos uh, season five opener. But um, uh, I'm going to put this onto uh, onto YouTube. Fantastic live, Graham. Oh, thank you, Hunty. Uh, I think Craig was was uh, was fantastic. So uh, it was really good information. Really interesting talk. I will see you all soon, Craig. Thank you very much. Cheers. Take it Bye. easy. Cheers all. Good night. 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 Can't find the off button. There we go.